um, for, that, for that one, okay? All right, uh, and let's begin with our opening hymn, uh, number 461. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. It is my privilege, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, to announce God's grace to all of you. All of our sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to The Lord is my light and my salvation. One thing I have asked of the Lord, that will I seek after. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. For my father and my mother have forsaken me. 
Wait for the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please remain standing for our hymn of praise, number 649. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted in triumph far above the heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the Spirit of truth, whom you promised from the Father. For you live and reign with him in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the scripture reading. First reading is from Acts chapter 1. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was in all about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their own language, Akaldema, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, May his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it, and let another take his office. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all, that, all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, Beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, 
Show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 John chapter 5. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has borne concerning his Son, Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning his Son. And this is the testimony, that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests that we have asked of him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. The Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. The words of Jesus. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost except to the Son of Destruction, that the Scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in, your, in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake I consecrate myself, that they also may be sanctified in truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Let us now confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our children's message. Remain seated. Um, I'm going to just stand up here. Kids don't have to come up for it. Today, because we all have moms, and today is Mother's Day, uh, so you can put up our next slide, please. Happy Mother's Day to all of our moms out there. Um, uh, this, is, uh, this isn't really a children's message. This is a children's message in the sense that we all have a mom, and we are all the children of a mom. So everybody gets to participate, okay? All right, and I'm going to start with a question that our moms out there are not going to like very much at all. All right, okay, don't give me your answers. Just think of your answers in your own head. We don't want to embarrass any of our moms or anything, but I'm going to ask the question, then I'll answer it for myself, um, and you guys can think of your own answers, okay? What is it about your mom that frustrates you the most? What is it about your mom that frustrates you the most don't say anything, okay? But I'm going to give that answer. One of the things, I think probably the thing that frustrated me the most about my mom was that she always had 
to be the first one there and the last one to leave. No matter what it was. So if we were going to an NIU football game, we'd get there an hour early and wait outside the gates to get in to get our seats. And then after the game was over, she wouldn't, she wouldn't leave until the game was completely over, and then we'd be sitting in our seats, and she said, oh, well, let's just wait till the crowd thins out. And so we'd wait another half an hour just sitting there waiting to leave. And then we could finally leave. My brother and I are like, can we please just go home? You know, if we go to Thanksgiving with our aunts and uncles, we were always the first one there and the last one to leave. And then on top of that, what made it even more frustrating is my mom was one of those who couldn't say goodbye once. She would say goodbye, you know, four or five times before she would finally leave. So, you know, she'd be talking to somebody, and she'd say, oh, well, you know, it's about time we had to leave, goodbye, and then she'd talk to them for another five minutes. And then, and then she'd go, oh, 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 well, it's about time we had to leave, so uh, goodbye, and then she'd talk to them for another five minutes. And my brother and I would be sitting over there going, please, we just want to go home. Can't you just let us go home, right? Today we are celebrating moms. But moms can sometimes be frustrating, can't they? You know, moms make us do things we don't want to do. You know, like clean your room, or eat your Brussels sprouts, or whatever food it is that's healthy for you, but you don't like, right? Moms can be frustrating that way. Another way that moms can be frustrating is they don't always give us what we want, or what we ask for, right? You know, if we're at the store with them and we're, we're, we're walking along with them and, uh, and we see something we really want, Mom, 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 can I get this? Can I get this? No. Oh, please, why not? Because I said so. And it gets frustrating, doesn't it? We don't get a good answer to our why. Um, but, uh, but Mom doesn't always get us what we ask for either, does she? And yet at the same time as Mom being frustrating, Moms are one of the most wonderful gifts that God has ever given us, isn't it? A mom's love is truly special. So now what I want you to do is I want you to think about the best thing about your mom. Okay? All right, what is the best thing about your mom? And I'm going to answer it for myself as well. Uh, There was a couple of things I could have chosen, but I chose this one, and that is this. My mom uh, showed her love for us in that she was always playing games with us. She was always spending time with us. So if we were outside, she would play baseball with us. She would throw the frisbee with us. She'd play tennis with us. If we were inside, she would play Monopoly with us until my brother and I got good enough to beat her. Then she kind of stopped with that. But, but, but she would play other games like gin rummy and stuff like that with us. And she would always be spending time with us. And that showed us how much she loved us is that she always had time to play games with us and do those types of things with us. A mom's love is special, isn't it? Okay? Who do you run to when you get a (laughs) boo-boo? You don't run to dad, do you? Because if you run to dad, guess what dad's probably going to do? He'll take one look at it. He maybe give you a quick little hug, and he'll say, oh, just shake it off. You'll be okay. Right? (laughs) That's what dads do, right? What does a mom do? Or you come running up to her, she goes, oh, my poor baby, and she'll put Neosporin on it, and she'll put a Band-Aid on it to make it feel better. She'll give you a kiss. She'll put you on her lap and hug you and hold you until you feel better, right? A mom's love is special. As a matter of fact, I think there's only one person who loves you more than your mom, and that's God, right? And here's the thing. When you look at it and you think about it, God's love is a lot like your mom's love. Because guess what? Sometimes God makes us do things we don't want to do, right? Things like honor your father and mother. Be nice to the kids who are mean to you at school. Share even your most favorite toy (laughs) or gaming system or whatever. And here's the other thing about God's love. Sometimes God doesn't give us what we ask for, does he? Just like a mom doesn't always give us what we ask for, and we wonder why, and we ask God why, and his answers usually are frustrating to us. But here's the thing about it. Just like with our moms, even when we're a little bit frustrated with God, we know that God loves us with a very, very special love, doesn't he? 
okay? And we know this because he sent his son to the cross to die for us, that we might live forever. Okay? So today, remember your moms. Thank your mom for being your mom and treat her like a queen today. But also remember that God's love is a lot like mom's love, but even better because he's God. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for giving us our moms. Thank you for the love that they have for us. A love that gives us what we need, not always what we want, um, but always gives us what we need. And thank you also for the, having that same type of love for us that always gives us what we need, not necessarily what we want. We pray this in your precious and holy name. Amen. And we'll continue with our next hymn. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, dear Lord. Amen. Our text for this seventh Sunday of Easter, uh, Mother's Day, is our epistle lesson as it was read earlier. Dan, hold off on putting up the next picture until I ask for it, okay? All right, thank you. It will be shortly. One year, a family asked the mom of the family, what do you want for Mother's Day? And this mother, she, uh, she said, I don't want much for Mother's Day. You know, I just want 
breakfast in bed. They're like, okay, we can do that for you. You know, they still got her gifts, they got her flowers, they got her chocolates and all of that stuff. But, but they made this big plan and this big to-do to make her this wonderful, fabulous breakfast in bed for Mother's Day because that's what their mom wanted. That's what she asked for. So they made her pancakes, they made her eggs, they made her sausages. They, they, did, they went all out for, for their mom and made her all of this stuff. And they, they, they brought her her breakfast in bed. And then they kind of left her alone and let her eat her breakfast in bed and they went their way. Mom finished the breakfast and then, you know, took the tray and everything downstairs, came down to the kitchen, and the kitchen was a complete and utter mess. We'll take our next picture now, please. The aftermath of Mother's Day. Sometimes we need to be careful what we ask for. Don't we? You know, sometimes we need to be careful what we wish for. Some people wish that they'll win the lottery. But then if you win the lottery, you have all the headaches and responsibilities of having all of that money, not to mention the fact that all of a sudden, all of the people that you know have become your best friend. And person after person after person keeps asking you for money. You might get that promotion at work that you've been wanting or that you've been asking God for, but then you have to work a lot more hours and you don't have enough time to spend with your family and you don't get to see them as much as you did before. Be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. And that's a big part of what is behind our New Testament lesson for today, which serves as our chat. Our text. John writes, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. If we ask according to his will. What is God's will? Well, hopefully you all know what God's will is. Hopefully you learned it in confirmation many years ago. Hopefully you've learned it here in church or in Bible class or something along that. Um, but here's God's will in a nutshell. Jesus says it here. He says, this is the will of God that you believe in his Son. God's will is that we all be saved and that we all go to heaven, period. And that, of course, happens if we believe in Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for us and rose again from the dead to open the gates of heaven for us. That is God's will for your life. If you are ever in question wondering, what in the world is God's will for my life? That's the answer right there. God's will for your life is that you end up in heaven when it's all over with. That's God's will. Okay? Everything else, everything else is in service to that will. Okay? Everything else that God gives to you, everything else that God does for you, everything else that God does for you is solely to get us to believe in Jesus Christ so that we can go to heaven. So, so in a sense, asking according to his will, you know, if you ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Asking according to God's will means first and foremost that you ask a God to save you and to save everyone you know and love. That's it, first and foremost. Of course, though, there is a lot more to it than that. God wants all good things for us. That's why he gave us mothers, right? Because he wants good things for us. He wants you to have life and to have it to the full. He wants you to have joy and happiness, peace and fulfillment. God wants you to have security in your life here on earth. He wants you to have a home and family and friends and a good job and food and clothing and everything else that we need in this life. God wants that for you. God wills that for you. So when John writes that if we ask according to his will, he's not just meaning that we ask for salvation, okay? Of course, that should be the first thing we should do, and that should always be at the top of the list, okay? But John also means that we should ask for all of those other things that are good for us, that God already wants to give us. 
The problem that we have, though, is twofold. We have a twofold problem here. And the first of that is this. We don't always know what God's will is in regards to these other things. We know what his will is towards salvation, right? You know? But we don't always know what his will is towards the things of this life, the things of this earth that we ask him for, okay? We don't always know it because we're sinners. And as sinners, we cannot know God's mind, what he wants to do for us, why he does what he does, or when he wants to do what he does. And as long as we are sinners, we'll never be on the same page as God in that regard, okay? And so we don't necessarily know what God wants to give to us at any particular time. Let me give you an example. He might want to give you that promotion at work. Or he might want you to lose that job because he has a better opportunity waiting for you. Now those are two very opposite things, aren't they? getting a promotion at work or losing your job, right? And one of them at the surface looks really good and one of them on the surface looks really bad. But either one could be God's will in that situation, couldn't it? It really could. Whatever his will is, it would be for our good, but either one could be God's will. And that's just one example of how we can't really know what God's will is in regards to the things of this earth. If we don't know what God's will is in those things, how then can we ask according to his will? Well, we really can't. The only thing we can do is always end our prayers with, but not my will, your will be done. As Christians, we will learn and grow in our faith. We will get closer and closer to knowing and understanding God's will, and we'll get closer and closer to God as well. But in this life, we will never be perfect at it. We will never be able to truly know what God's will is in the things of this life. Our second problem, though, is this. Often, the very things we want the most in this life are the same things that are the worst for us. Those of you who are Harry Potter fans recognize that from Dumbledore's, what Dumbledore said to Harry towards the end of the first book. All too often, the very things we want most in this life are the same things that are the worst for us. Which foods do we want the most? Pizza and ice cream, not Brussels sprouts and apples. Right? Okay? Look at how often people want alcohol or drugs. Now, how many kids ask for a bike at Christmas time as opposed to a gaming system like the Xbox or Nintendo or something? I'm dating myself by saying it like that. Um, would winning the lottery really solve all of your problems? Well, it might solve a few of them, but it will add a whole bunch more, even bigger ones. So, not only do we not always know what God's will is in regards to the things of this life, but many times we want the exact opposite of what God's will is for us in the things of this world, right? And for those two reasons, when we pray, many are the times where we don't ask according to his will. And that means we need to be careful what we ask for. The great thing about God is that he gives even when we don't ask for it. It's actually a lot like a mom. There are many, many times and many, many things that moms give to us that we never ask for that we sometimes don't even realize that she's giving us or doing for us, or that we take it, granted, take it for granted that we're getting them from mom because she just gives them to us so much and so often. Moms are so selfless that way. And God is the same way. Many times he's giving us things and we don't even realize that he's giving them to us until we look back later on in life. Now, a lot of times God doesn't give us what we want. 
A lot of times God doesn't give us what we ask for. But God does always give us what we need. Again, just like a mom. <laughs> she doesn't always give us what we ask for. She does always give us what we need. If we need joy and peace, God will give it to us in his time, not ours. If we need a new job or a promotion or a current job, God will give it to us in his time. If we need a little extra money or time off from work or a little bit less stress in our lives, God will give us those also. But I want you to notice two things that were said there. If we need them, God will give them to us. Not if we simply want them. Many are the times where we, we want those things and we think that we need those things, but we may not need them to the extent that we think. Okay? And then the second thing is God gives them to us in his time. Not in our time. You know, we want it right now. Give it to us right now. Uh, we might think that we need them right now, but God knows timing better than we do. And he may not give them to you right away. He might wait for a while, whatever the reason might be. The other thing, great thing about God is that if he doesn't give you what you ask for, it is because he wants to give you something even better. You may ask for a job promotion, but God might want to give you strength so that you can learn to deal with hard and difficult times. You may ask to win the lottery, but God wants to give you faith in Jesus Christ so that you can go to heaven someday. And in heaven, heaven is so much better than having all of the money in the world, much less just winning the lottery. What it all boils down to is this. If we ask according to his will, he hears us. If he doesn't give you what you ask for, it's not that he didn't hear you. It's not that he didn't answer you. But rather, it means that God wants to give you something else, something better. You may not think it's better, but it is better. Because what we asked for, if he doesn't give it to us, what we asked for wasn't according to his will. And it probably wasn't what we needed at that time. There have probably been many times in your life, and there will be many times more in your life, when you ask God for something, and he does not give it to you. And you'll probably wonder why, and you'll probably get a little bit frustrated with God, right? And that will be tough to go through, just like it is with your mom. <laughs> When you ask her for something and she doesn't give it to you and you get a little bit frustrated. There will also be other times that God will bless you with something that you weren't looking for, that you didn't ask him for, and is something that you needed at that time, and it comes as a wonderful surprise, just like moms are constantly giving us things that we don't look for. Remember that whether God gives or whether he refuses to give, it is always out of love for you, and it's always for the best. Amen. Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light for our path. Amen. Please rise as we bring our offering forward and sing our offertory, number 488.
Please bow your heads and pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, your love for us is greater than even our parents could be, greater even than our moms can be, which is saying something because a mom's love is truly special. We thank you for your love for us, a love that, of course, sent your son to die for us, but a love that also gave us our moms. Help us to show them how much we appreciate everything that they've done for us. Help us to show them love the way that they show us love as well. Um, and during those times when they know what's best for us and we don't, and we ask them for something and they don't give it to us because they know what's best for us, help us to not get too frustrated with them, but to remember that they do it for us out of love. There's Jesus. Many are the times when we can get frustrated in this life uh, with you because we ask for things and you haven't given them to us at least as quickly as we would like them to be given to us. Despite that, we know that we can come to you with all of our requests, knowing that you will do what's best, even if it's not what we want. To that end, we pray for those who are hurting in some way, who are sick or injured or hospitalized, especially uh, for Cindy Fowler, who is still having back troubles and back issues, that you would bring her healing. And we pray for those who have lost uh, loved ones and mourn their passing. We pray for those who battle against addictions or loneliness or depression, uh, that they may be given uh, freedom from their addiction or loneliness, and that they may come to know the joy of being your child. And dear Holy Spirit, we pray that you would truly bless all of our mothers here this morning. They give so much uh, to their families, and they do so much for their families, and Many are the times that we don't acknowledge it, we don't thank them for it, uh, we barely even, you know, know what's going on sometimes. Bless them and watch over them. Give them your love, give them your care, give them your peace, give them your joy. Um, and help us to do a better job of appreciating them and thanking them for all that they do. We pray this all in the name of our dear Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated for our closing.
And of course, once again, uh, happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers out there. Um, speaking of which, um, we do have flowers, carnations out there for all of our moms. Um, please take one as you leave. Uh, that is the church's gift to you. Also, I was told by the Altar Guild that uh, the flowers that we have up on the altar, uh, if anybody would like to take them home, they're welcome to take those home as well. Or if you know somebody uh, that maybe could use a little bit of cheering up today or something like that, you're welcome to take the, those flowers and give them to them. Um, so please talk to Marjean if you, uh, <laughs> if you would like to take uh, the, some of the altar flowers home. Otherwise, they just kind of sit here all week and die. Uh, so we'd much rather have uh, uh, them go out to somebody who could use them. A um, couple other announcements. Um, next Sunday, the 19th, is the last day of Sunday school before we take a break for the summer. Uh, so, uh, so please mark your calendars and remember that, that next Sunday is our last Sunday school day um, before, uh, before we, we depart for the summer. Also this week, um, on Tuesday, I will be gone. I have a Winkle conference that I'll be at, so I had a pas uh, general pastor's conference last week. I have a Winkle conference this week on Tuesday, um, so I will be gone on Tuesday. So um, 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 if you need me, you'll have to, to give me a, a call on the cell phone, and hopefully I can answer. Um, and then on Wednesday, we're having a work day here at the church and at the parsonage. Uh, we have a lot of things that need to be done. Windows need to be washed. Some, some uh, f uh, flower beds need to be weeded and stuff like that over at the parsonage. Uh, we're going to clean out the gutters. Uh, we have a whole bunch of stuff sitting in the basement from when uh, the Gleasons left that they had left there in the basement that we're going to try to get rid of. And so we need help to, to, to carry those out into the garbage and stuff like that. Um, uh, so... Uh, so um, so please, there's a sign up in the back if you can help out with any of that. If you don't want to sign up, but you want to show up and help out, uh, that's great too. Um, but, uh, but we are working starting at 5.30. If you want to start beforehand, you can. If you want to come a little bit later, you can too. But we're going to try to start around 5.30 on Wednesday evening. Any other announcements? God's blessings on your week. We look forward to seeing you again next week.